Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I'm always on the hunt for great cards. Today is mail day, and I do have some mail to open. There is a, uh, what I hope is a uh, pretty great card in this package, something that I'm very, very excited about, a card I never thought I would own, and uh, man, I cannot wait to get into it. I'll tell you that. It's been hard for me to not open this over the last several days since this arrived, and I'm super excited to get into it. Uh, before I do that, I want to announce that uh, it appears as though we have hit 700 subscribers. I can hardly believe that, and uh, it seems like it's going to stick. It happened uh, yesterday, at least that's when I noticed it, and so it's been, I think it's been about 24 hours, and usually it takes a couple of days to shake it all out with YouTube and see if they'll allow me to keep all of those subscribers or not, but... Uh, so far, so good. Going to give it a, another day or so and see. And then, uh, you know what I do whenever I hit a milestone mark like that? I have a collection that I buy online and I give away all of the cards in it to all of you. If you are a subscriber to this channel, you get to watch me go through the collection for the first time. I unbox it here on the channel and you make a list of any and all cards that are in that collection that you would like. And then I mail you cards. It's that simple. It's not a contest. Not There's not just like one or two winners. It's a giveaway where everybody gets cards as long as they are subscriber to the channel. That's that's all it takes. You just leave me a comment, let me know, and uh, send me your list. You email me your list. The longer your list, the better, because then there's more of a chance you'll get at least some of the cards you want. I always send everybody at least a few cards. Some people get a lot more than that. It's just kind of... Dude, whatever people want, I try to get it to them, and uh, this looks like a, a good collection. I bought it a couple of months ago, and I bought it, uh, and I I don't really remember too much about it. The main reason I bought it, and I do remember this, is that there were a lot of Nolan Ryan cards in it. That was the thing that made me think this would be a good one to give away, because whenever I have given away collections in the past, and I do this every time I hit a milestone number, Nolan Ryan cards, no matter how many are in there, they always are gone. Everybody always wants Nolan Ryan cards. And so when I saw all these in this collection, I thought, this is great. There were like, I don't know, three, maybe even four pages of Nolan Ryan cards right at the front of the collection. And I remember that, but I don't remember too much else about it. I'm sure there are other stars and Hall of Famers or else I wouldn't have bought it. But it's been sitting here. Actually, it's been sitting downstairs uh, in a closet down there for the last... I don't know, probably a month and a half or so. I bought it about two months ago in preparation. And, you know, I see a good one. I want to get it. And that's what I did here. So that is waiting for us to go through. And we'll, again, we'll see if this 700 subscriber number sticks. And if it does, then I have got a collection to give away later this week. Probably, uh, I imagine we'll do it on Thursday on Anything Can Happen Day, I think. Uh, that's probably what I'll plan for. Do it on... Uh, Thursday, uh, if the number sticks, if the number doesn't stick, then I'll wait, wait a little longer. And, you know, if everything goes well, we'll do it on Thursday and, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. You guys will get some cards in the mail in a little while. And, uh, it's one of the funnest things that I do on the channel. I love doing it. It's a lot of work. It's a ton of work and it takes quite a lot of time to do all that and a lot of money for the postage and of course the collection and everything. But I just enjoy it, and I know you guys do too, so that's why I do it. Every time we hit a milestone, it's my way of saying thanks to all of you guys, how great you are to continue to support the channel, leave me wonderful comments, and, and do all the things you do to make me want to just continue to do this. It's ad-free here on the Card Wolf Network. I don't make any money on this. I have no ads on my channel. YouTube has asked me and encouraged me to put ads on, but I have not done that. I have no plans to do that. This is about... Uh, for me, that's about the hobby, it's about the community, and that's why I do it. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys continue to enjoy it for as long as as you want and as long as I keep doing it. All right, so enough of that. Let's uh, get to this card. This is a, uh, a card that I, I really... Uh, <laughs> it's amazing to me that uh, I was able to get this card. I'm going to get uh, get into this here. And I'll tell you, this is a, uh, a Hall of Famer. It's one of my favorite players of all time. It's not a player I talk about very much, and it's probably not a player you know that much about. As a Hall of Famer and one of the greatest players, this player is uh, acknowledged by, by most uh, baseball historians and, and knowledgeable baseball people as one of the greatest players of all time. Never played in the major leagues, and uh, is also one of the fastest 
players of all time. And uh, if you're intrigued, good. <laughs> I'm trying to make you curious about uh, what I could have in here in a plain brown wrapper. That's uh, <laughs> this is a new one. I don't when I've last received a card in a plain brown wrapper, that's pretty nice. So this did not come from uh, CVS, I can tell you that. It came from uh, an online eBay sale that uh, I couldn't believe this card even came up, much less that it came up for auction. So that was fantastic. Very excited about this. And uh, this is a card of a Negro League baseball player named Cool Papa Bell. And he is a true great. This is from... Uh, the legendary, uh, legendary says this is a, a Panini product that they put out. I think it was 2022 that this came out. And, uh, I really couldn't believe that this came up. And the crazy thing about this, I've always loved Cole Papa Bell. He's absolutely one of my favorite players. It's hard to find, uh, cards. There aren't that many cards of Cole Papa Bell. There are only very, very few, like two or three playing era cards of Cole Papa Bell, and they're extremely rare and very expensive. And then every now and then one of the card companies will print one of his cards. This is an auto mem card. This has uh, supposedly his piece of his uniform and his autograph. It's a booklet card, and uh, I do not know what it actually looks like because the seller posted it just like this. This was the image that they used, this and this. And so I, I knew what the card was. It's a it's a five of it's number five of ten. They only did ten of these. And it's in, as you can see, it is in a one touch. But uh they didn't take it out of here, which I guess I don't know, they thought that there would be some value to this if people saw that this was authenticated by eBay, which is completely ridiculous. I mean, this is there's no reason that eBay would need to authenticate this. It's already authenticated by Panini as being what it says it is, but I guess the seller thought that that would bring more money, and it didn't. I mean, this is the kind of card that would sell for hundreds of dollars usually, and I think it did sell for hundreds of dollars because the only way you get this kind of a thing on a single is if you sell a single on eBay for over $400, they'll, they insist that sellers then have to have it authenticated through eBay's completely ridiculous system that really does not help collectors hardly at all. But uh, that's clearly what happened here. At some point, this card sold for quite a lot more than I ended up paying for it. And uh, I got this card for under $200, which is remarkable to me. Um, if you don't know who Cool Papa Bell is, just get yourself a beverage and sit down, because I'm going to tell you. Because <laughs> uh, he's a player that everybody should know about, and I know a lot of people don't know about uh, Negro League players, and I understand why that is, you know, they're it's just not something that a lot of people really, you know, know that much about. It, it's from a very long time ago. A lot of people just, you know, they know it existed, but they don't know much about the Negro Leagues and some of the uh, just truly giants of the game. Great, amazing, great players. Cool Papa Bell was one of them. Uh, as I open this, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about him, and then I'm going to tell you some stories about him. So you're going to get some baseball history today. I apologize for it if that's not the kind of thing you like. You can always fast forward if you want, or just uh, wait for the card reveal and go from there. But uh, Cool Papa played from 1922 to 1946, so uh, over 20 years in the majors. Well, not the majors. He never played in the majors. Over 20 years in the, in the Negro Leagues. He also played in uh, the Mexican Winter Leagues and in the uh, Dominican Republic as well. Uh, he and Satchel Page played on the same team in the Dominican Republic and in the, in the Negro Leagues as well. He is regarded by many as probably the fastest man to ever play professional baseball. And uh, the first time I ever heard about him, my grandfather told me a story about him. Some of you are going to cringe with what I'm about to do. I'm removing this absurd eBay sticker, which uh, has now voided the uh, authentication, and I'm perfectly happy with that. What a bunch of garbage that eBay thing is. My grandfather, as I was saying, was the first person to tell me about Cool Papa Bell. It was when I was a kid, and he he told me a story that is probably the most famous story about Cool Papa Bell. It's a story that Satchel Paige used to tell, that Cool Papa Bell was so fast he could hit the light switch on one side of the bedroom and be under the covers before the lights actually went out, which is a great story. And then I found out years later as an adult, I found out, well, that story is actually true. 
it's a true story that Satchel Page used to tell, and I'll tell you how it's true. Nobody believed it, but the funny thing is, Page and Bell were staying in a rundown hotel while their, their Negro League team was traveling somewhere in the U.S., and according to Satchel Page, the wiring in the hotel was so bad that in their room you'd hit the light switch, and the lights would flicker for a few seconds before they actually went out. And so... In in reality, <laughs> cool Papa Bell could hit the light switch and get under the covers in those few seconds, and so it's a true story. But uh, you know, as a kid, I just I, it seemed fantastical to me. But uh, I don't know which is better, knowing that it's true or, or just kind of thinking of it as mythology. I'm not sure which is better. But uh, anyway, let's have a look at this card, and then I'll tell you some more stories about the amazing individual that was cool Papa Bell. Let's see what we have here. Like I said, I don't know what this card looks like. I know it's a booklet card, and uh, it is supposedly an auto mem card. Let's see what we have here. And that is what we have. This is a uh, bat relic and autograph of Cool Papa Bell. That is so sweet. Wow. That is awesome. Really, really happy with that. Beautiful card, too. I mean, that, that booklet is a really nice presentation in and of itself. That's an unusual picture of Cool Pop. I don't know if I've seen that one before, actually. So that's pretty sweet to see that. And, uh, wow, that is, uh, that is wonderful. Really, really happy to, uh, to see that. Man. Whew, kind of shaking, because I just can't believe I own this now. This is, uh, I don't have any kind of like uh, grail cards or any anything like that. I don't really think of my collection that way, but uh, owning a, an actual piece of, of a bat that Cool Papa Bell used when he played and having his autograph there on the on the same card with it, that is, uh, uh, it's really very, very meaningful to me. I've always, always liked Cool Papa Bell so much. Uh, he claimed that he could round the bases in 12 seconds flat. Nobody ever got timed him doing that. The closest uh, anybody ever timed him, I think he rounded the bases in just over 13 seconds on a muddy field. So they thought on a dry field, 12 seconds seemed pretty reasonable, which is remarkable to imagine that anybody could do that. Uh, another story about Cool Papa's speed was that he once hit a ball up the middle of the field and was struck by the ball as he slid into second base. <laughs> I can't imagine that's true, but I like to imagine that it's true. Um, the one story that is true, but doesn't seem like it could be, is that Cool Papa was so fast that he once scored from first on a sacrifice bunt. Supposedly, he broke for second on the bunt, and as he got to second, he saw that the third baseman had broken towards home to field the bunt, so there was nobody at third to cover. And so Bell rounded the bag and went for third, and the catcher saw this, and he charged out to third to try to cover, and Bell just flew right by the catcher on his way to home plate and scored standing up because there was nobody at home plate to field any kind of throw. So supposedly that is a true story, and of course the guy who told that story was the batter who laid down the bunt, and the batter was Satchel Page. Satchel Page told a lot of great stories. If you've never read his uh, autobiography, if you've never read anything about Satchel Page or seen his interviews, man, he is he is full of great stories, and that is one of them. Uh, as far as Cool Papa Bell goes, Tris Speaker, the Hall of Famer, called Bell one of the most magical players he'd ever seen. Charlie Geringer, another Hall of Famer, said that, I saw Ty Cobb many times, but I never saw him do anything like Bell. And Geringer was a tiger when he said that. So, I mean, that's really something. Another Hall of Famer, uh, Paul Wayner, Big Poison, said, the smoothest center fielder I've ever seen was Cool Papa Bell. And uh, the owner, Bill Veck, compared Bell to Joe DiMaggio and Willie Mays as three of the greatest center fielders ever lived. And as much as I, I love this card and I love all of these stories and I love sitting here telling you all this stuff, I'm going to gonna tell you just one more story and it's probably my favorite about Cool Papa Bell, and it is 100% true and verified by many other people. In 1946, Cool Papa Bell's last year playing baseball, he was leading the Negro League in batting by a wide margin. And there were just a few weeks left in the season, and Cool Papa went to his manager for the Homestead Grays, and he told him that he was going to sit out the rest of the season and thus disqualify himself from being eligible to actually win the batting title. He had to play out the season if he would win, and, and Cool Papa Bell stopped, and he said, I'm not going to play anymore this season. And his manager it was, you know, couldn't believe it. He said, what, why are you doing that? What are you doing? And as Cool Papa Bell explained it, 
He could see that the major leagues were finally looking seriously at Negro League players, and he knew that he was well into his 40s at that point, and he was too old that he would ever have a career in the major league. So he wanted the young player, who was at that time second to Cool Papa in batting, to end up being the league leader in batting and get a real shot at the majors. And nobody could argue with that. And so Cool Papa Bell sat out the remainder of what would be his last season in baseball so that that young player would go on to win the batting crown, which he did. And that player's name was Monty Irvin, who went on, of course, to become a Hall of Famer for the Giants in the major leagues. The last part of the story that you should know is that when Bell sat down and ended his his final season early, he was batting 393. That is the kind of person that Cool Papa Bell was. Whenever you read interviews with other players about him, whenever you uh, see anything about the guy, that's something that everybody says about him. He's one of the most decent men they ever met. Never drank, never swore, never did anything, said anything negative about anybody. Just a truly uh, wonderful person. And, uh, you know, my grandfather told me that story. My grandfather saw a lot of Negro League games. Uh, the Baltimore Black Sox, uh, that was the Negro League team at that time, and so he saw a lot of Negro League games. He saw Cool Papa Bell play, and he said, too, that Cool Papa was the fastest player he ever saw. The only player he ever, that I remember, my grandfather ever compared to Cool Papa Bell and said reminded him of Cool Papa Bell was Ricky Henderson, when Ricky Henderson first came into the league, and uh, would taunt pitchers on the base paths, and just, you, you couldn't, you couldn't throw him out. He was just so fast, and he would take huge leads off first. He said that. That was how Cool Papa Bell played. And I, I've never forgotten that. So that's the episode. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, had fun seeing this card that I am super excited about. I hope I didn't bore you with my uh, baseball history. I, I get excited about these, these things, and I, I just feel like people need to know more about some of these players that maybe they're not aware of. I hope that uh, you enjoyed that. And if you're curious about Cool Papa, you can certainly find out a whole lot more about him online. Just, uh, you know, type him into your, your search engine. There's a lot about him and uh, just a, a wonderful person and an amazing player. I'll be back here tomorrow open something new and modern. You guys be more excited about that probably. And uh, we'll see what we get out of there tomorrow. And uh, as always, happy collecting.